which I don't even, <laughs> I don't remember what I say. What do I say? What do I say? I don't remember what I say. Hello everyone and welcome slash welcome back to my channel. My name is Marissa. If you are new here and today, if you weren't aware, this past week was Earth Week and on my Instagram, every day of Earth Week, did a little thing called Earth Week Challenge where I and another friend and some other people just joined in to post a sustainable brand or practice that they do and reuse or have implemented in their life to help reduce waste. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit of my sustainable journey and what that has looked like for me what i do now kind of where it came from without further ado let's get into it so a little bit of my background history or whatever you want to call it in sustainability just came through how i grew up to begin with my mom shout out to the one that made this all happen um she really just kind of started it for our family her biggest thing was mostly in kind of cleaning products so when it came to dish soap laundry soap surface cleaners and stuff like that she was very aware of just the toxins and how toxic they were and how it affected the water essentially so when we were younger she switched all of our cleaning products to this one green company and we've been using them ever since so that's really where my awareness my consciousness kind of kicked in and I was just aware that some things just weren't right and there was something wrong. And then also growing up, we were always thrifting, buying things secondhand with my mom. Again, her whole like premise of it was, you're young, you outgrow clothes, so why buy them new when you can basically buy them new secondhand as a kid? Kids are reckless. They ruin things quite quickly. If you have ever babysat or if you have kids yourself, you would know. <laughs> so I'm going to share with you some of the ways that I've phased out single use waste, plastics, just things to replace that. I say this all not to guilt or shame anyone just because I know that these practices, while some are super simple to just kind of transition i do realize and i am quite aware that sustainable practices aren't easily accessible not necessarily meaning if you have a zero waste store in your community or your neighborhood i also mean in the financial sense a lot of these are of a higher price point like this toothbrush you can get plastic toothbrushes for like 75 cents this one is six dollars so just as an example i know that it's not accessible to a lot of people it's not realistic for a lot of people however there are ways that you can phase things out one by one because the most unsustainable practice in this whole movement or whatever you want to call it is the mentality and the pressure that's put on people to go from literally like zero to a hundred from giving away and getting rid of all of your fast fashion garments to throwing out all of your plastic bottles so that you can quickly transfer over. That's not the point. That's not what I want to be communicating. So I just want to make that clear before moving forward in this. So if you're still with me, I'm so excited to share these with you. So here we go. One of the, okay, so one of the simplest things that you can really do to phase out plastics is a bar of soap. It's really 
I say that it's simple because it's one of the easiest things to do because a lot of soap bars are cheaper than getting it in the bottle. They last a lot longer than the liquid soap. I'll link I'll link everything below to what I use. So I don't remember what brand this is from. It's one of the most genius things that I have ever seen in my life. It's a pump that you can just screw on top of a mason jar. You can get a mason jar for like a dollar at a dollar store. This pack for the pump, the mason jar, lid top, and would you call it a straw or is it a tube? It basically, it just screws right on top. And then you can go, if you have a zero waste retailer in your area that's close to you, this was $18, which for me isn't a huge sacrifice financially, something that I am personally able to do. So if that's an option for you, it's a great alternative to a bar of soap. This one, I have also replaced it with facial cleansers. Rocky Mountain Soap Company, they are a local company based out of Canmore, Alberta, near Banff. So, another easy thing to phase out is a loofah. This, I actually, because I have the skills to do so, I made this myself. It fits like a standard size bar of soap. So if you get a body wash bar, I like using this better than a loofah, and I also like it better than like a bar of soap and a washcloth, which if you don't want to get one of these, use a washcloth rather than a loofah because pretty much every loofah is straight plastic. They also tend to fall apart after three months, max, I would say. <laughs> and you also end up having to use a lot more soap because most of it gets lost in the loofah itself. So it's just like waste on waste on waste on waste. We don't, we don't want that if we can avoid it. <laughs> it scrubs. It's just, it's just nice to use. If you go to a natural skincare beauty place, I've seen a lot of these that are sold there and they're usually around like six to, I've never seen one more than $12, but these last a long time. It's 100% cotton, so you're not getting the microfibers in the water or anything. Just an overall great option. Next on the list <laughs> is reusable, ew, reusable coffee mugs. I've had this for a couple years. It's by Frank Green and their reusable mugs are 100% recyclable completely and entirely. They're really easy to use when you get them. It comes with a card and how to take apart the lid so that you can get a deep clean if and when I get another one just because I love it. It like it doesn't leak at all. It's just I just like I don't really know what else to say about it. It's just an incredible little mug. It doesn't smell like coffee. I can still use it to drink water out of because <laughs> I don't have a water bottle. I just don't drink water. We're trying this is the year we're trying to change it. You can put any liquid in these and it doesn't stain the inside, it doesn't coat the inside, it doesn't smell, leaves no odor, nothing. It's just, it's amazing. The way I drop the things I own, and this has not cracked, it really hasn't even, like it doesn't dent either, like aluminum, wood, or whatnot, everybody has their own thing. The only bad thing I have to say about it is that it's not insulated, so it's very much like on the go. Like you fill your coffee, you drink it, or you fill your tea, you drink it as soon as it's in here. It doesn't stay hot for very long, which is the only thing that, and the only reason why I would just get something else was if I wanted it to be hot longer, but I don't know. I just, I go and I drink and that's it. Another super standard easy switch that I see, especially if it's clean beauty, a lot of the switches that I see are glass. 
rather than plastic bottles. It does end up being a little bit more expensive, but I do find if you yourself have made the switch over to Clean Beauty, the difference for packaging prices I find and have found is that it's like max three dollars more if it's in a glass bottle which if I'm paying $32 for a face cleanser or a face toner or a face cream and they switch to glass containers and it ends up costing me $33, $35 I really can't say <laughs> much just because I know that they're making the strides and if I already love the company and love the product it's not if anything, it's only going to make me want to purchase it again. So another thing that I have phased out of single use is phone cases. This is a Pila... I never said it out loud. I'm pretty sure it's a Pila case. They're 100% compostable because they use flaxseed for all of their phone cases. This one I've had for a couple years as well. And I have like never used anything. I don't have... A screen protector haven't cracked my screen yet one of the slightly more costly items that I have transitioned out of but I would say it's totally worth it because it is one of those one-time purchases that you really make is a single blade razor this is probably one of my favorite transitions that I've made it's a Canadian company, women owned, and the blades last a long time. Also the replaceable blades, you get about seven uses out of them. It was, I think it was around $50 including shipping, which again, even when I was buying it, really <laughs> felt like a huge investment, but I'll never have to buy another razor. I'll never have to buy another razor head. You can just store the used blades in a mason jar and take it to a place in your city that handles sharp waste. So something new that I am transitioning, oh, that was hard. <laughs> transitioning into is sustainable, clean beauty. I don't really wear a lot of makeup, but one thing that I really am never without are my eyebrows and my eyelashes. So I'm trying out this new mascara. It's a Canadian brand. This company is called Elate. All of their packaging is in bamboo. It's not a zero waste product. I've used this one a few times. I am a fan. <laughs> it's super buildable. Really just meaning that you can blink to your heart's content until your lashes are as long as you like. And I like mine long. I love this one as well because it doesn't smell disgusting like drugstore, whatever, mascaras. It's also really light on my lashes. I don't feel like I'm wearing mascara. My lashes don't stick together when I blink because they're not getting clumpy. It doesn't melt off my eyelashes, leaving like the dark black circles underneath, which I hate. No, it's not a cute look. It doesn't look good. But this mascara, I think I'm sold. Like, I honestly don't think there would be any reason for me to try another brand. Another small change, reusable makeup remover or face pads, is that what they're called? Cotton pads? <laughs> to replace them. This one I made, again, because I have the resources, I have the skills to do so, so it didn't cost me anything. I made it out of an old towel. There's tons of brands that have super affordable options for this as well. You throw it in to the wash when you're washing like your towels, your dish towels, whatever, kitchen towels, and you can 
reuse them. And you can get like packs of three to six to I think I've seen 12. We're coming to the end. So, toothbrush. I love my bamboo toothbrushes. Always check to see if like you're, if you have a local organic food mart or something like that in your area. A lot of them do carry reusable, sustainable products. So before you even order online, I would recommend checking there first because shopping local is also sustainable. Isn't that fun? Bamboo toothbrushes. This one has nylon bristles. Even still, having the small nylon plastic bristles is still better than having an entire like toothbrush be plastic. So the bamboo is compostable. Super great option. Clean teeth. Clean earth. Haha. <laughs> My newest find has been floss. I was thinking about this for quite a bit over like the past few months. If there was like a compostable sustainable option for floss. So these ones are made from corn. You can get the floss tin and then you have your floss refills. These were, I think it was 10 or $12 for two, which isn't too bad. And yeah, just another thing that you can use to phase out floss if that's an option for you. Next one for zero waste is this natural deodorant. And I love Native, they're a great brand. This one is their zero waste plastic free option and alternative. Now, as I mentioned before, it's best to check as you do the phase out to check your local natural whatever markets, if there's one in your area, because my mom actually found, she's like the star of this video. She should be in this video. She should be the poster child of this video. She really should be. <laughs> she found one at a blush lane, which is in my city. They actually carry a plastic free deodorant, which also has really great reviews. So I will also link that one below as an option for you to look into. If that's not available or an option, then Native is fantastic. I love it. This other brand is absolutely incredible. It has amazing reviews as well. So you've got a couple options going for you. Two more things. <laughs> so these are laundry sheets, detergent sheets. This is actually very new to me. So one sheet does two loads. I did a load of laundry the other day and these ones actually work amazing. I don't know if this is a specific brand or if it's specific to the store that's in my city but i'll link other options below and this was nine dollars for 20 loads so it's like two dollars a load again if you can afford to do that then another great option last but not least for the ladies i transitioned to a cup a menstrual cup a few years ago I would never go back to using pads or tampons just because this is a much greater option for me personally. I'll link some like period underwear and reusable pads and environmentally friendly and conscious tampons and pads that are disposable as well for those of you who are not ready to transition over because it's a big transition <laughs> before my camera battery died i think i managed to get through all of my transitional items so i figured i would change the scenery since for my final sort of sustainable change which i mentioned at the beginning that was pretty much my most of my childhood was thrifting and secondhand shopping a lot of people will ask me how much of my closet is actually thrifted and I just for fun a few months ago was thinking about it and counted up every item that I didn't thrift because that was much easier <laughs> between like pants tops coats and everything I actually had 25 
clothing pieces that weren't thrifted. They were either from years ago that I had purchased or I maybe had just recently purchased it for whatever reason that was or <laughs> I actually made the item so that didn't happen overnight. It was mostly over the course of the past two years I would say that I was intentionally purchasing secondhand and even to say that I did end up consigning quite a few pieces, gave away, donated. I'll probably most likely do another talk. It'll be informative on the impact that these changes can make. I hope over Earth Week and April is actually Earth Month. There's Earth Day as well. April 22nd is every year. I hope over that week you learn something. If you follow me on Insta that there were some takeaways that you had. I did an Instagram live with one of my really good friends, Abby Martin. And if you have 82 minutes of your day to spare and you want to watch a very, I thought it was very entertaining, possibly even engaging, definitely informative, I would say more of like a commentary style on sustainable living and a lifestyle and also just bringing in like my personal faith journey of that all as well and how that has played a part in it. Yeah, just sharing knowledge and teaching and informing people on certain issues in the world is a huge, huge passion of mine. It's very life-giving for me, so yeah, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, concerns, whatever you want, the comment section will be a further dialogue of everything that I missed <laughs> communicating in this video. I'm very excited that this video and something that actually makes sense for the tagline of Stay Sus Kids is actually out and will really make this channel make more sense rather than stay sus while I make and design my own clothes and show you the process. From this point forward, a lot more of this content will definitely be incorporated in my channel because it's really important to me and something that I find is really important for other people to know and be aware of. As always, stay sus kids and with much love and much thanks.